everybody welcome back to my channel i am so happy to see all of my little disney peaches here today and y'all i am so excited for this video this is the video that i was talking about um that i've been working so hard on i really have when i bring planning videos to you guys or anything that's instructional I really try to work so hard on that so that it gives you the best information and whatever I can give to you. And so <clears throat> today is really not a planning video for Disney. It is how I take care of my bags. That's my handbags, my crossbodies, my backpacks. It's everything from Loungefly, Dooney and Burke, Kate Spade, Coach, anything that's Disney themed. I mean, I'm gonna explain what I do. Now, let me just start out by saying I am not perfect. This is just what I do. I have gotten so many requests for this video and I just kind of put it off, put it off because it's such a huge undertaking to really just organize all my thoughts and put it all together and try to explain to you what I do and it to be effective and helpful. But you know, it's just basic, you know, trying to keep your bags looking new and beautiful so that if you ever want to sell them one day or trade them one day uh, or even pass them down to someone else, um, they are in still beautiful, beautiful new condition. So, um, so yeah, y'all come on back. I got a bunch to share. <laughs> got my outline here so you're going to see me referring to this quite often because I don't want to miss anything I don't want to leave anything out because I've really given it so much thought of how I do things and I just have written them down as I've gone and so I'm going to go in categories and I hope that it will really be understanding to you so today I'm going to start with the part that's probably the not the least fun to deal with and that's the cleaning and upkeep of your bag and so we all know we use our bags some we use more than others but um you know with everyday wear and tear you're gonna get dirt stains tears things like that in your bags and you know this is just the basic um, things that you need to know to keep your bags looking new and beautiful and just know the more you wear it um, you know the more wear it's going to get so you may need to do a little bit more upkeep to it the longer you keep wearing it so but if you're like me I change my bags out all the time maybe not maybe about once a week or maybe once every 10 days I'll change my bag out and so um doing that i put very little wear and tear on my bags because you know i've got plenty to go through so i you know i don't wear the same bag again for quite a while so um if you're in that situation where you have plenty of bags to go through um you're not going to experience it as much as someone who has just a few or you're just starting out with your your collections and um so you're wearing yours a little bit more so this is what i do okay so the first thing we're going to start out with is taking care of vegan leather so when we're talking about vegan leather we're more than likely talking about lounge fly or some other similar bio world some other similar product that is a vegan or a simulated leather but it is really easy to clean let me grab one real quick okay so this is an example of a vegan leather bag and this is from lounge flies you can see right here and the whole bag there's no part of the bag that's not a simulated leather so that being said it's not real leather so you don't have to worry about the same concerns as you would with a real piece of leather uh, there's some bags even lounge flies has different 
different uh, materials. Some feel more plush and you would swear it is leather, but it's really not. And then you might have some just that are like PVC. Um, there's just several different materials that you can run across, but they all are very easy to clean. With a bag like this, if you get dirt, or some stains, some stains, not all stains will come out, but some stains, all you need to do is take a damp cloth, and I suggest using a light colored cloth. Um, this is kind of like a white, and um, I use this just for cleaning, so it's kind of lost its brightness, but I use a, um, a light color cloth. If not white, I would get, you know, maybe a light tan color, something that doesn't have a lot of dominant color in it. Um, that way you don't ever have to worry about transferring anything from your rag to your bag by accident. Um, not that that would happen, but just take precautions. But I take a light color, a uh, light colored uh, cloth and I wet it and get it just damp. And then I just try to clean wherever that spot is. Or if I'm overall cleaning, I just, you know, will do that with a damp cloth. If that is not good enough to take the spot that you're working on off, then you can add soap. Now you always want to use a mild soap. Um, I have heard through the whole handbag community, not just Disney, but you know, out into your more high-end bags, um, the um, foam soap where you mash the dispenser down and it looks like liquid on the inside, but it comes out foam in your hand. That is probably the, the most used with your most delicate bags that you want to make sure nothing kind of goes wrong. But when I have foam soap, I use that. But if I don't have foam soap, I use whatever I have. And so this is just soft soap and it is a light blue color. But what I do is I don't apply that directly to the bag. I will put wet wet my cloth and I will uh, put some on my cloth and just rub it in and get it lathery so that it turns white. Uh, when it's at that point, I then apply it to my bag. And that way, um, you can still use what you have on hand, but you're really not applying any color to your bag um, at all. Um, you know, and you know, that is what I recommend. Nine times out of ten, that will take out normally any kind of dirt or grime or anything like that that's on your bag um, if it's vegan leather. Um, also, you have to be really careful because vegan leather, I believe, can still get color transfer. So, like, this might not be that big of an issue because it's such a dark color, but if you had a bag that was lighter, maybe cream, white, pink, um, some of your really light mint, light blues, like, you know, Tiffany blue, those kind of colors, if you're wearing blue jeans, or if you're wearing something that's um, really bright, red, navy, black, um, that you're rubbing against your bag constantly, you may experience some color transfer from your apparel to your bag. Now, I have not ever had to address that. I've never had to get color transfer out. So, I would not be, um, I would not be good to give advice on that. I'm sure there's tons of that um, particular problem um, throughout YouTube. I'm sure you can just search for that. But just let me warn you that I still do believe you can do color transfer um, on your lighter colored vegan bag. So be careful. So just be aware that you know you can still get some color transfer um, on your lighter colored bags that are vegan leather also. Um, also, I reached out and, I, you know, I have my hacks and tips and things that I do, but you know what? When I was planning this video, I wanted to be sure to uh, reach out to these manufacturers or these designers and just confirm what I'm telling you is correct and to ask if there's any other input that they would like to put in as well. So I contacted Liz over at Loungefly. Many of you know Liz. She is amazing and um, I discussed with her what I was doing 
doing and what I was planning to, you know, show you and tell you. And she also added that maybe perhaps spraying your bag with a Scotch Guard uh, would be um, a helpful component too. That way it helps it, you know, protect it from water, stains. If you do that right off the bat, um, maybe you won't have to worry about the different steps of cleaning. Now, with that said, I've never personally scotch guard a bag, um, but I don't know if it changes the way it feels, looks, or anything like that. Um, I just know that it is an option that you can take um, to spray your bag so that um, they are protected against stains and rain and things like that. And of course, if I did it, I would definitely uh, cover up my uh, logo tag here. Any of the hardware that you don't want to uh, be in, included in the spray, I would cover that up. So this again is an example of your vegan leather and the simple, easy ways to clean your bag, protect your bag um, also. so. Vegan leather. Okay, the next type of bag that I want to tell you how to take care of. You can see I'm missing a bag from right here, so I have taken it out as an example. The next type of uh, bag that I want to show you is your coated cotton um, from Dooney and Burke. This is an example of coated cotton. It has a very firm feel to it, and you can feel, it almost feels like the bags from Loungefly, um, but firmer, a little bit firmer, and it's because it is cotton that has been coated um, at the manufacturer so that it is easy to clean, easy to take care of, it won't damage very easily, and I love, I probably feel like in that mid-grade level of designer bag, this is my favorite kind of bag to carry is a coated cotton, and it's because it is so durable and easy to clean up. Now, it's just like the one before with Loungefly. Um, this is an easy clean. Um, I would take my cloth and wet it and get it damp. And I would spot clean where it needs to be. Or if you're just doing your weekly or, you know, your 10-day cleaning, um, definitely you would do the same thing. And, um, you know, if it's something that just needs a little bit more, you could use, again, your mild soap and uh, apply it and be sure to get the soap off real good when you're done. So the coated cotton is so easy to clean and take care of. Um, it, it stands up to water and the rain. It is amazing. And you do, it's really a, almost a carefree product. And if you take care of it, and um, it will last you a lifetime and stay beautiful and new looking all the time. Now also, I want to mention while I've got the bag here, because with Dooney and Burke, your coated cotton is just the base of your bag. You will always have leather accents. So the handles are true leather. These now, straps are dyed um, black. So you, and they, they have a protection on them. So I really, if I got caught in a rainstorm, say I'm at work and I'm running out to my car after work and I'm, I've got this bag and I've got rain all over it, I would not be really upset if water got on this because um, I know it'll wipe off. I feel, I know that they have a coating on it that has gives it a certain amount of protection. So, um, for me to get in the car and then wipe it down real fast, this is going to look just like it does now. So, uh, that's what I love about this bag. This bag is just perfect. It is going to last a lifetime. And as long as I take care of it, it is going to remain brand new looking all the time. Now, here's another example. If you have coated cotton, another Dooney and Burke like this, and this whole pink area is the same coated cotton, you would clean it with your damp cloth or soft soap, and but and it would come clean and beautiful. But these handles and the straps on these beautiful bags here 
Arvaketa leather. These are not treated um, leather, and so most times these will stain in water. So I have many bags that I have used over the years that with Vaketa leather and I've had watermarks and it's just you know it's impossible to get out I mean you have to really just keep carrying your bag and the oils from your hands will start to um, make the handles turn you know with use of Vaketa leather these handles will turn a beautiful honey color and just gorgeous now um, I will say you can do the same thing as you do with your lounge fly bags. You can use Scotch Guard. Now, I don't use Scotch Guard on my bags. I never have. It doesn't say that I never will, but I just never have. And um, I'm just real funny. I'm so scared, especially with my leather, real leather, especially the Vaketa leather. I love the beauty of Vaketa leather. And I'm so afraid. Um, that if I put a product on it, I'm scared it's going to, one, change the color or change the feel and look of the bag, of, of the handles or the straps. And so, for that reason alone, I've never put a product on mine. But, you can spray these with your scotch guard there is um there are products out there on the internet i think there's an apple product that is made for bags i know a lot of people outside of the disney community in the hand in the handbag world they use apple products um and they they treat their bags and take care of their bags and um and they just take it to a whole nother level and uh, I particularly don't do that but it is available for you to do I know that's an option so I would definitely look into it if you were interested in doing something like that and um, there's so many different types of leather out there um, for bags but mostly I just have um, the coated cotton and it just has the leather trim whether it be uh, dyed and kind of coated or um, just straight the kettle leather so but you can use um, any of those options to treat your bags if you want to do that and um, but yeah so I just wanted to share with you the different types of leather trim that will come on your bag and the upkeep to this will be so much easier than the upkeep of this. So I'm very particular. I don't carry Vaketa leather in the rain. If I know it's going to rain, I try not to carry a bag with Vaketa leather so that I don't get into that. And then obviously stains are a lot harder to get out um, and whatnot. So I definitely would be careful when carrying my Vaketa leather. Okay, the next type of bag that I want to discuss with you cleaning and it's one that you don't even think about cleaning but you have to from time to time even if it's just getting dust off and that is your sequin bags now I didn't even think about this until I had to clean this particular bag and because it's black it really showed dust really easy it's not that I had a stain on anything but I had dust because um, each of these little sequins can grab dust and I was like oh my gosh you know I had a dry light colored cloth that I was using to just do like this just to brush off the dust and I felt like that wasn't enough for me so I went and I wet it and I got it really damp and then I took it and kept doing the same thing but with a damp cloth now, I've heard some people say that they've transferred color, whatnot. I've never had that issue. Um, I don't do it hard. I just lightly brush it um, with my cloth, whether it's dry or damp. And I clean the bow. I clean the back, which is no sequins. And 
it has come so clean and beautiful and I don't see any dust anymore and but I've kept in mind that I need to keep this one dusted a little bit more frequently because I think the sequins might show off more dust and um, yeah I just want to keep it beautiful my object is to keep my bags looking new and so I love a new looking bag and so I'm very you know I'm very picky with my bags uh, from time to time I have sales on Instagram just trying to move some stock out and I hope everybody has really um, appreciated that because I really do try to keep my bags in new condition all the time even if I've used them or not and as you can see it's absolutely stunning just beautiful so that's how I clean my sequins bags so another thing that I want to share with you is how I take care of the tassels that are on my bags. Uh, you don't see very many tassels on lounge fly bags, maybe every once in a while, but mostly you see that with Dooney and Burke, Coach, Kate Spade, um, a little bit higher, uh, you know, price level. And, you know, you pay a lot for that look and that beauty and you want to take care of it. So what I do is I use these, it's called expandable mesh covers. And essentially what it is, it's the little mesh covers that you put over your makeup brushes um, so that your brush, uh, your bristles on your makeup brushes don't get all bent out and flared up. And that's what I use on my bags. I will be putting any product that I use listed down below so that um, most of the stuff that I get is off Amazon. So if there's anything that I have that you want to get, be sure to look down in the description box and I will have um, a link for you there, okay? But this is how it looks on your bags, okay? I'm going to come up close so you can see it. This again is my um, Dooney and Burke uh, nylon backpack and it has tassels here on the bottom and all you do is just a tassel that looks, let me show you what one looks like off of the bag and you can see how when they say expandable what they're meaning some of you that use these for makeup brushes you already know what we're talking about but here it is this is what it looks like it's long enough to fit just about any tassel that comes out and it expands out wide you can see that and so what you do is you just open them up Sometimes it takes a minute to get it open and push it all down in there correctly. But let me pull it off and show you how it keeps my tassel. So look at there. Had I not had this on here, you would have pieces of this tassel going in every direction. And it really makes a bag look old. It makes it look used and just you know not attractive at all and it really helps your tassels to stay new and beautiful and just like they did sitting on the shelf at the disney store that you purchased them at so absolutely love that and i have another one here also i have another one and um I, this is my pets dooney and burke and you can see i have two tassels here that I keep uh, covered. Even when I have them on display in my cabinets back here, I keep them on it. If I go out to dinner or, you know, shopping or and I'm taking one of these bags, um, I'll take them off for that. Uh, but most of the time I keep them on there unless it's in use and it works like a charm. Again, this is it. Um, you can buy them in huge amounts. This one bag is a hundred. So, and it was very inexpensive. Again, I will, I will put all of that information down below. I got these off Amazon. Okay, another thing that I want to share that I do is when I wear a backpack, I constantly bring it back home and try to put it in the same condition it was in when I bought it. So, that means, number one, I make sure the straps are tied back up. 
And I do that because I think, well, one, it helps with storage. So when I display my bags back here in their cabinets, I just think it looks better when the straps are not all dangling out by the side of it. It helps the bag stay in place and not move because the straps are in the way. And it's really convenient from that standpoint. But it also looks good when all you see in front of you is just the bag. You don't see the straps you know coming out everywhere but i just love how it looks it just looks neat and organized and that's just how i like to keep my bags you know and so what i do for that um because you know what sometimes the the little paper thing tears and you can't put it back on the bag um sometimes you throw it away by accident you come up short basically but i do use these if they're on there i keep them on there i just don't take them off and throw them away um but i definitely use these um and um i will when i take them off i always cut right where it meets and so that i can just wrap it back up and put it together and retape it and you know that's one way of keeping your straps together so that um they stay neat organized and just very compact and if for some reason you say well i've lost some i don't have any more let me show you what you can do so in order to get this again i thought you know when you get your backpack you always have that paper cardboard thing back here which feels like it's essentially the same product so i've started saving mine they look like this they just fit on the back of your bag like under your straps like that when they come in the box brand new so you know what i do is if i want more of these i save these and i just cut them to to the size of one of the previous ones and and i just use it to wrap back around the strap and tape it just like this so save those papers that come in to the back of your bag like this and just use your scissors cut it to size and just rewrap your straps so you know that is an easy cheap inexpensive way to actually wrap your straps back up um, if you've run out of these um, and then another way that I like to do mine is I have these velcro velcro straps that I use also now um, I, I don't have one right here to show you I'm gonna actually sh put one on and show it to you myself that way you can get an idea of what it looks like on the bag so these are from amazon some people like to just use these and not fool with the paper cardboard things but it's a product that you would have to buy so if you're not looking to buy anything here's the way to do it you use the ones that they send you i save all of mine in a drawer so that they're readily available when i need one if i want to use it but i love this idea this will last so long um these are reusable whereas these are reusable also but eventually you're going to have so much tape piled up on them you're going to have to get new or make new um make new ones out of the cardboard pieces um so i love this option also this is just a second option for you to be able to use on your backpack straps when storing them now also i will mention that when they're together like this and you put them in a dust bag or something like that oh it makes it so much easier to get them in and out of the dust bag instead of those straps flying all over the place just telling you that but anyway let me show you this up close first so you'll see what i'm talking about again i have all of this link down below and all of the link you just gotta hit it and go straight to amazon you'll see what i purchased but let me show it to you up close so here it is this is all velcro on this side you've got a loop that you can go through for security and then on this side i'll try to get the light on it you see it's kind of more of a slicker type product a little bit more firm they do call it a microfiber product so basically what you do and these are all six inches so basically what I do, and I'm going to see if I can do this right here in front of you. I'll just do it over the white so you can see it. So I just put the shiny side up against the, the strap itself. And, <clears throat> 
And then you can see right here, let me bring it around. So you can see right here, we're going to put this through the hole. Wow, this is hard to do like this. And just pull it across and it sticks like Velcro. So if that white piece of cardboard wasn't there, you would just have the black strap. And it just holds your bag. It's soft. It's like I said, a microfiber product. So it's not offensive to your bag. Of course, I would never pull them really tight so that um, you don't want to damage your bag and leave a mark, you know, uh, from the product. But just, you know, pull it uh, just softly enough to hold the bag and to hold the straps together. But it really, uh, it looks pretty. Now, if you're a uniform type person and you like all of your products to be the exactly the same you'll want to get all of these straps or do all of the cardboard things but i you know for me it doesn't matter i mean nobody some things i keep in dust bags and other things i keep you know in display either way you don't see it and so i like to use both and uh, but yeah that is my second option for keeping your straps um pulled together and looking beautiful and just compact and just like it's in new condition. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about with your bags um, and the upkeep and making them look beautiful and new and as beautiful as possible is um, you always have the ongoing trouble of your mini ears getting out of shape or one's forward, one's back, etc, etc, etc. Now Disney has gotten where they send your ears in a like a foam strip where it holds the ears in line and y'all that's basically what i do um i think it helps i think um there's some ears that no matter what you do is going to fix them um you know i don't know if they're just not uh sewn on correctly or what the problem is but for the most part you can see here on my bag that these ears are beautiful they're in perfect shape and this bag came all the way from the UK so even with that kind of traveling um this product has helped it stay straight and beautiful uh, without any problems whatsoever. Um, they come, there's a slit, if any of you are not familiar, there's a slit and your ears, it, they just slide down over your ears. I save all of mine. If for some reason this part tears when you're taking it off, I either tape it back together or I staple it um, so that it's at the edge and not up against the ear but in some way I put it back together and this is what I use um, you can see it from the back and the front and that's how it looks and um, y'all it's it just works so good I don't normally put them on my displays I'm just kind of um, showcasing my sequins bags right now so I took all them all off but I keep them in a drawer and when I do do storage and I you know I'm not have them showcased I do keep this this particular item on there to keep the ears straight so whenever you get those please keep them now there is a lady on YouTube she's sweet she's from uh, the UK I believe she uses rubber bands um, somehow or another and um, I will link her channel down below and you can see that that's another option um, if you're looking to straighten your ears but um, yeah for me this has been the thing that I love the most is just keeping this foam on it and I feel like it keeps it straight as it needs to be and keeping it new and fresh and just absolutely beautiful so save your little earphones Okay, the last thing I want to tell you as far as the upkeep goes um, is that I love how bags look when they're stuffed. I keep all of my bags stuffed, whether it be with this crunchy paper that comes in your Disney boxes, with the paper that comes in your bags when you order them new, or I have air papers. 
no matter what you want to stuff in there. If you want to stuff another pillow in there. Um, I know a girl on YouTube. Uh, she's sweet as she can be. I'll link her channel down below. She puts ears in hers and it keeps them full looking. So whatever method you want to use, I always think it's a great idea to keep your bags full so that they don't get creases and uh, dents and just look all shallow and just, you know, I think keeping them stuffed just really makes the bags look beautiful. So, I mean, that's my personal opinion and I love how mine look when they're stuffed. And so, it's just another way I like keeping my bags full, stuffed, and looking brand new. Okay guys, so we're down to the section that I am so excited about. I'm so, 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 so excited about it. Um, and that is that how you can store your bags. Okay, so there's so many ways that you can store your bags. Number one, you can put them in a display cabinet like I have here. You can, a lot of people hang, hang their bags on walls. I do not have the wall space to do that, so that's not even an option for me. But a lot of people that have the room, they hang all their bags um, on the wall which is pretty, it's fun to do. If I had a huge room uh, other than my bedroom <laughs> to do that, I would definitely might do some of that as well. I love how I store my bags here with my display. It's a beautiful display for my videos and I love that. Um, but I think hanging them on the wall on the wall is a great option too. You can put them in dust bags. Um, there's just so many ways that you can store your bags. So let's just start out, number one, talking about your displays. So like I said again, when you start displaying your bags in cabinets like this, display cabinets or uh, whatever, you wanna make sure you, you're placing these cabinets in places in your room that's not directly have beams of sunlight just shining right down on the bags. And that way you don't ever have to worry about discoloration, you don't have to worry about fading, anything like that. And um, your bags will always keep beautiful as long as you take care of them. And so behind me you can see I'm actually showcasing, like I said before, my sequins bags. These bags are always on display. And uh, when you do that, you have to make sure you dust your bags. If you don't dust your bags, they're just going to get dirty. Dust will pile up on them and it, it will, will take away from the beauty and it might make it even harder to clean in the future. So my general rule of thumb is I like to dust my bags um, either once a week to 10 days. So seven to 10 days, I like to go through pick up my bag. I'll either, like I said, use, if I'm just dusting lightly and I don't have to worry about heavy buildup or stains or anything like that, I'll either use a, a damp cloth like this or I'll use a duster, just depending what mood I'm in, how I feel like it looks at the moment. And I also will take the bags off and I dust the shelf um, also while I'm doing it, you know, and make sure there's no dust on the shelves that can pile up on my bags and then just dust your bags. I mean, it really don't take that long. I mean, honestly, it doesn't. Um, it, it I do find myself procrastinating to do that from time to time, but you know, I really do try to keep my bags looking beautiful and new all the time. So it's just if you're going to display your bags like this in a display system, um, you definitely need to keep your bags dusted to make them look new and beautiful. But this is one option of how you can store is and display your bags all at the same time. So, the second way um, I mentioned before is hanging them on the wall. You can hang your bags on the wall. I've never done that. I don't have the space to do that, but I do know it's beautiful. I know a lot of people like to do it. But I think that's basically the same concept as just displaying this. You just wanna make sure that you keep them clean and looking beautiful. And so, so that's a second option. You can hang your bags on the wall. And then the third option um, I have 
are my dust bags. So I do a combo of one and three. I display my bags here and I have some more cabinets over to the side um, that I have a bunch of bags in also. But I still have more bags than that. So my next option is I put all of my holiday bags. Thanksgiving. Halloween, Christmas, all of those holidays, I am trying to keep stored so that I have room for my other bags. So, um, I'm going to show you what I have and, um, I think you're going to like this. So I want to show you what I'm using for my dust bags. Here's the first one that I'm going to show you. It is just a kind of like a off-white uh, HL color, um, but it is just a cotton um, breathable uh, dust cover. And it's so thin, you can almost see through it. But um, it serves the purpose. I mean, it covers the bags inside so that no dust or damage can come to them. And uh, it comes with this, uh, it has the black drawstrings that you can pull the top to. There still is a little hole for air up there. So it's definitely breathable. And y'all, I actually got this from uh, a friend of mine that I used to really watch a lot when I was outside of the Disney community, but still in the handbag world. And um, uh, her, I think her name is Pecan... Uh, Beauty. Oh my gosh, she knows everything about Dooney and Burke. Not Disney, just Dooney and Burke. And I got this idea from her quite some time ago, and I'm going to link her channel below so that you can see it. She's the one that uses the Apple products on her bags, but um, she did this, and I just fell in love with it. She made her own dust bags, but I've tried to do that, and that just didn't work out for me. But she... Uh, instead of trying to open the bag and see what's inside each bag, she came up with the idea of printing a picture off of the internet of what bag is on the inside and attaching it. And what I did is, this is just off regular typing paper, but um, I don't have a laminator. So what I did was I just took shipping tape and I just taped it all the way around and it gives it that slick clear finish that will keep the back that will keep this picture looking beautiful and so when I go to pick out another bag that might be in my closet um all I gotta do is look at the picture I don't have to rumble through each bag and untie them and see what's there what's not there and I love that idea so that's what I do for all of my bags in a dust bag um, that's cotton that I can't see through. Now, I will tell you this. These bags came with this plastic cover. And let me bring it up close to show you. All of these dust bags come with these in their bag. I'm going to see if you can see this. This is a, uh, and each one is separate. You can rip this off. I'll keep them together because I don't want to lose them. But you can slide in a little card and it you can write what you want to on this. And then they include they include these tiny little plastic um, strings with the little hooks on the end that you just run through each other. And you can either attach just this plastic sleeve and you can write something on there and attach it to your bag. But what I did is I used that little string or little whatever um, to hook my picture. So what I did was when I printed the picture out, um, I put the, the, the shipping tape all over it to give it that laminated feel and look. And then I took my little hole puncher and I punched a little hole in the corner and I used that little... Uh, that the little wire thing to attach it to my bag. 
So now I've got my picture on there. You could use a ribbon. It don't matter. If you have your own dust bags, like I've got some Denny and Burke dust bags um, that um, I might use as well. And I might not have enough of these and I might use some little ribbon um, to attach the picture to my dust bag. But um, I just love this idea. It, it just gives you, it's inexpensive y'all. You'll be so surprised how inexpensive it is to get these. And let me show you, I'm going to open up the dust bag and show you how it looks. Um, you know how dust bags look. And it's very spacious, very wide um, for your backpacks. So what I do is I just slide that picture on my string, um, my drawstring before I tie it and so that it's secured and it won't fall off until I untie my dust bag. So when you untie your dust bags, be sure to keep up with this so that you don't lose it, okay? So I've gotten several of, you know, you can see I've got this one. It's got my uh, peppermint bag in it. Um, I've got my ghost bag in this one. Um, what's in this one? I don't know what's in that. I don't have a tag on it yet. Here's another Christmas bag. Um, the ugly sweater bag. So those are awesome, awesome options uh, the, for your dust bags. Let me show you another option that I feel is really worth it, okay? Okay, so here is the second dust bag option that I'm using currently. And this one is for the clear dust bag. And y'all, I love these for my larger totes, for a lot of my Dooney and Burke products that I'm not currently using. This is one, this is the new uh, Dooney and Burke that I got for Christmas for Mitzi. And it fits perfectly in this size. And y'all, you can see you don't have to do a name tag on these. Um, they are more expensive. So, you know, unfortunately, I don't think I could use these for everything that I have. But I like to use them for my nicer, more uh, higher end bags. And again, it's plastic. You don't need a tag because you can see exactly what it is. Um, it comes with this, uh, you know, this fabric type edging up here. You have the handles um, that you can use. It comes with a black zipper at the top. And y'all, this is what I love. The back is this material that is almost paper-like, but it's fabric and it's breathable. You, it's like I said again, you wanna make sure you, you let your, your bags breathe. You don't ever wanna confine your bags so that it doesn't get any kind of ventilation. And so um, <clears throat> I love this about this product. And the bottom is the same thing. So really the only plastic part you have is right here on the front. And you can see what your bag is. And I love this. I bought, and I will link all of this down, all of this will be linked down below. All of this came from Amazon. And what I love about this is it came in several sizes. This is perfect for this tote. I mean, would you not agree? I mean, it's the perfect bag for this tote. So uh, it come in this size. It came in a larger size. And this is what I have my new Kate Spade in right now. And again, it is that fabric material on the back that's breathable and on the bottom. And you can see through the front and see exactly what you have in it. So let's show you the size comparison to these two bags. Those should be level right there. But this is the larger of the two. And then you have this. So you have those two sizes. And there's several different shops that carry this and several different shops that have different sizes. I know I've got some saved now that I'm going to get and I'm, I'm getting just certain sizes. I, I bought what I got all in a set. So they're all different sizes, but I really don't need this size that I'm getting ready to show you and the next size as much. Um, so, but I do have this size also. And as you can see, I have a crossbody, Dooney and Burke crossbody. And I have, my cats have been rubbing up against this. I got a little bit of cat hair on it. But um, I have my Dooney and Burke crossbody and then my little doggy print 
crossbody from Dooney and Burke right there also. And so I was able to fit two in this bag. And so you can see the fabric is, they're all made exactly the same. I even have a strap down here in the bottom. And y'all, I love these. You don't have to worry about putting name tags on them. You can see straight through them. And it has the breathability and the protection that you need. I just love it. And the last one I'm gonna show you in that set is the real small one. And I have my little small crossbody Kate Spade in it. And again, it's made exactly the same. It has the breathable material on here with the handles. I just love this set so much. But that is another option. If you really have some high-end bags, more Dooney and Burke, Kate Spade, Coach, whatever, and you want that extra, you know, protection, and this is ideal. And I love being able to see through it. It is just perfect. Okay, another thing I want to show you as far as the dust bags go, um, I forget, and I apologize, my sweet friend, uh, someone commented on one of my um, VPD um, videos and actually recommended this. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think of this. But someone commented that using your Bippity bags as a dust bag would be a great idea. Now, I like that idea. Um, I like that the inside is is basically a, they just have a white type material inside, even the red ones. Um, what you see on the outside is not what's on the inside. So I have felt completely confident putting my bag in there and I have in this one, my Oogie Boogie. And um, I had felt completely confident putting it in there, but then I started worrying about the ventilation because this doesn't seem to be a breathable material uh, to me. So I thought, well, you know what? I could use it and just leave a little bit bigger space at the top um, for some air to go inside and, you know, just kind of do that. And I think this is a great idea for storing bags too. So these bags could be even more useful when you get them in your bippity box. And I've gotten, uh, I've got Oogie in this one. And then I've gotten three of the bippity bags so far. And then I have, what do I have in this one? Oh, I have the uh, Sanderson Sisters tote in this one. And I've got it kind of opened a good little bit at the top. And um, then I also have my third one. And I have my uh, black lounge fly that Meetsy gave me so many years ago. And it's kind of opened at the top a little bit. And then I wanted to show you the inside of this. You know how red it is on the outside. It's white on the inside. So you don't have to worry about. That was my first thought when I saw these. And she mentioned it. And I was like, oh, wow. But I hope it's not like this on the inside. That it might cause some kind of color transfer to my bag. But I was so pleased to see the inside was white and I did not worry about that anymore. So the only thing I had worried about was the ventilation. And so I think I solved that by leaving a larger hole at the top so the air could pass through. And um, I will definitely keep checking that too. But I think that's gonna be perfect. And again, I have some extra, when you get Dooney and Burke dust bags, um, just regular Dooney and Burke, um, you know, I've got extra ones of those. And so I'll use those also. I'm gonna utilize every dust bag that I can because I have just a multitude of bags. And so I want ones that are not displayed and that I visually take care of physically and dust them and everything like that, I wanna have them secure so I don't have to worry about them getting damaged damaged or dusty or faded or discolored and I think the dust bags are a great way to do that. So um, I just store all of my dust bags in my closet just on a shelf. Nothing fancy. Um, you know you can even store them out in your room if you want to. It don't have to be in your closet but I just like to put them in there for space to save space. But that's how I store my bags that are not currently being displayed in my cabinets or I'm not 
not currently carrying is through my dust bags. So I've given you many options of how to store your bags um, in your dust bags, how to uh, uh, identify them and to label and name them so that you don't have to struggle to find a bag by looking through all these different dust bags. If you're very organized with how you store things, it will be so much easier and you will enjoy changing in and out of your bag all the time. So I love that option. So I'm just excited for my collection. I'm so excited for sharing all of this with you. Um, I've been wanting to share it for so long. Um, if you guys have any questions about things I didn't cover, um, this is just basic things that I do. It's not written in stone. You may do things differently. If you do, share it down in the comments. Um, it might be something I might like to try to do in the future. Um, but yeah, definitely, the, the channels that I'm linking down below, they have got good ideas for certain things and I'm going to be linking that down so you can go check their channel out and see their, um, their processes and see what they do. Um, cause at the end of the day, we're just trying to keep our bags looking beautiful and new and I just love it. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it's been long. Um, I just felt like I needed to put all of this together in this kind of way and share with you just the top things that I do. And if I come up with something different and start doing something differently, I'll let you know. Okay. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for being here today and being a part of my channel. So we'll see you again soon. Bye.